Hey everyone and welcome back to another Mining Chamber video. In today's video we are going to talk about EIP 1559. So we're going to discuss what it means for miners, what it means for investors, why are there so much drama about this topic, and then I'm going to talk about the latest call from the old core dev team where they listened to the proposal from Bitsby Trippin which is the EIP 3368. Now let's go ahead and get into this right after the intro. So first let's talk about EIP 1559 and how it came to be and what it actually does to miners as well as the coin itself. Now if you don't know what EIP means, it means Ethereum Improvement Proposal and there are many of these EIPs and each one is basically trying to improve a certain aspect of Ethereum as a whole. So now in this video we are going to be focusing on the 1559 one where it was authored by Vitalik and if you don't know who Vitalik is which is very unlikely he is the co-founder of Ethereum and he was the one that basically proposed this EIP. Now this EIP was created on April 2019. Now the date will hold some importance because when this EIP was proposed the mining game wasn't the same at all. The profits were definitely a lot different and the difficulty was different as well. So the simple summary of EIP 1559 59 is that it basically burns the transaction fees rather than giving them to the miners. So from a perspective of a user or a trader of Ethereum, a lot of people have the misconception that it will reduce the prices of gas fees. Now it will not necessarily reduce the price of gas fees, but instead it will make them more predictable. So meaning that when you go in your wallet and you try to send a transaction, you won't have to think about your gas fee. The wallets will have the ability to automatically set your gas fee without you having to set it yourself. And that is one of the benefits of EIP 1559 for investors and traders. And then one other thing that's possibly been beneficial for the network and that is to try to be as deflationary as possible. So that means is that every 15 seconds a block is solved and that block will introduce two new Ethereum to the network. Now this is a fixed number so it doesn't change and the idea with introducing EIP 1559 it will burn the transaction fees in hopes of fighting the inflation of Ethereum. So rather than always increasing the circulating supply by two Ethereum they also want to burn out as much as they can so that they can basically give it a type of scarcity. But it won't always be deflationary because sometimes you'll have less transaction fees in a block than the base reward so in some scenarios you will introduce one ethereum maybe less than one ethereum or they will be burning more than two ethereum which will even cover the base reward and now for the miners side of things, we do benefit from everything that I've mentioned before about traders and investors. I think one other misconception is that miners just sell their crypto right away and that's not the case with a lot of people. I myself hold it usually most of the time and I don't sell my crypto unless I have to pay some utility bills for the mining rigs. So that means as a miner you'll benefit from more predictable transaction fees and all this other good stuff that we talked about. Now the one thing that comes in the way for miners is burning the transaction fees rather than giving them to miners. As we all know the mining profits have been skyrocketing lately and it's bringing in a lot more new users and miners to the community especially for us miners making our investment worth the while. Now a lot of the miners that have been in this field for a while know that the mining profits were never that high and they usually are a lot lower than this. So when we look back at 2019, Ethereum was around $200. At most, you'll probably see 3 Ethereum per block. And at some scenarios, you will see high block rewards, but it's never in the same scale that we're in right now. Now, what's so important about block rewards? It's basically what's going to change in this EIP. So the block rewards are divided by two different things. First, you have your base reward, which is 2 Ethereum, and then you have your transaction fees. So the transaction fees add up to the base reward, and then that is distributed to the miners for securing the blockchain. Once EIP 1559 is implemented, those additional rewards above the two Ethereum will be burnt rather than given to miners. So for example, if you have a block reward of four Ethereum, only two of them will be given to the miners, which causes a 50% loss in profits. Now we do see a lot bigger block rewards, so you can expect more than 50% profit loss, but there are two new things that came to light with this EIP. So the first thing you have is inclusion fees. The best way to explain inclusion fees is by telling you about the transaction fee. So the transaction fee will be divided into two different fees and the first one will be the base fee and the second part will be the inclusion fee. So now the base fee will be the one that's burnt and that's usually the bigger sum of the transaction fee and the inclusion fee will be the tip to the miners. So even though this is an incentive to miners, it really won't be a big percentage. It will probably be less than 10% of the transaction fee. So you can't really expect much from having the inclusion fee as an incentive. 
Now in some scenarios you will see some really high block rewards due to the inclusion fee. So for example if the average block reward is 4 ethereum and then out of nowhere a block with more than 4 ethereum comes on the network and by more I mean like a lot more ethereum then that is most likely from inclusion fees of two people trying to be to a higher position on the block. So the inclusion fee is like paying more to be the first in the block. Now in a way this is similar to how we have it now, people that want their transaction to be sent first they will have to pay more fees for them to go first in the block. Now instead of it being the full minor transaction fee, it will be the inclusion fee what sets you apart from the other transaction. Your base fee will remain the same based on the volume of transactions, if the volume of transactions is high then your base fee will get higher but if it's not high then your base fee is lower. Now as far as I know it's a fixed number for the base fee but don't quote me on that there are many videos out there that explain it way better. So I highly suggest watching them. Now other than the inclusion fee there is another hot topic which is about MEV which is minor extracted value. Now minor extracted value is outside of the hands of the individual miners that mine to a pool like the majority of us and we all mine towards different pools for example Ethermine, Flexpool and all these other pools. Now MEV needs to be set up through the pool side. And how MEV works, it's basically an entity paying the pool to reorganize the block of transactions based on whichever way they want it to be. And like that, they can get an advantage in arbitrage or trading in general and putting their transactions first. MEV topic is honestly very confusing, it took me a while to understand it, so I might still have it wrong here. And if I do, please clarify in the comments below. There is one video that I highly recommend watching about MEV and it's on Bitsby Trippin channel where he did a call with Micah and Micah went through explaining MEV in details. Now I watched that video, I still didn't grasp it fully but if you watch it you might understand it much better than I did. So in a nutshell, for us miners we're going to experience some profit loss and it might be a big amount of profit loss but we won't know until the time comes for this EIP to be implemented. So to visualize the profits, let's say you have 500 mega hash and then the block reward is at average for Ethereum and then we're going to be putting electricity price of 5 cents for now. So with these numbers, with how currently we have it now, the profits are not bad at all so you'll be making around $1,600 right after electricity with the super cheap electric rate. So now fast forward to July when the adjustment happened, so we put the block reward to, to Ethereum and then you'll notice your profits have dropped by half so you'll be making $770 from 500 mega hash rather than the higher amount that we had earlier and if your electricity rate is higher so let's say you live in germany and you have a really high electric rate so 30 cents per kilowatt hour then you'll be making 500 dollars after the electricity so that is all with the ethereum current price which is at 1838 now if ethereum drops in price you can expect your profits to go very low if it goes below a thousand dollars then the profits will be way less so you might not be profitable anymore in mining so all we can hope for is that ethereum would not drop down too much because if that happens then we can expect the network will be centralized with only ASICs that are super efficient and then most of the home GPU miners will not be able to mine properly. So now we can go ahead and move on to the timeline. So for the timeline I'm going to try to be going through a lot of events that happened which led up to where we are right now and all these links will be in the descriptions below so if you guys don't find any of the links please let me know I'll try to add them or just look up the name and then you will find it. And if I do miss any events please let me know in the comments below as well I'm going to try to cover it as much as I can so you guys can understand the timeline of this problem which will give you context for the drama that's been happening. So the first thing is we have had a community call on Bitspeed Trippin channel where he invited over multiple cryptocurrency mining channels and then we just talked over the problem and everything that's going on. So this is one of the first calls and then after that call there was another call with the Ethereum cat herders community call and here they talked about the problem. There was a couple of core devs in here and then they discussed the EIP 1559 problem with Chris from Flexpool as well as Carter from Bitspeed Trippin. Now the general feel of this call is that they didn't really take anything serious from what Carter is saying like they didn't see the problems that potentially can happen due to EIP 1559 some of the people in the community did and they did listen well and all around it was a good call it just didn't get the miners point across and then we've had another community call on Bitspeed Trippin channel it was also streamed on different channels as well now in this call we just reflected on the community call from the ethereum cat herders and we just gave our opinions toward the situation there's a lot of information in these calls so i highly suggest watching them if you haven't yet if you find that the audio is a little bit choppy or it's echoey then you can find it on a different channel and then i'm sure you'll be good to go 
Now after this community call, we've had another call about miners extracted value. And in this miner extracted value, it was mainly a discussion with Micah where he explained what MEV is and he went into details about it. So if you don't know what MEV is or I didn't do a good job explaining it, I highly recommend watching this video. And then we have one of the Ethereum core devs meeting call where they talked a little bit about the EIP 1559. So you guys can find a pinned comment that will take you exactly to that section of the video. Now from that video, they talked about a little bit of concern but in general it seemed like they didn't really care about what will happen to miners regarding to EIP 1559. So now after this call that's where some worry came across the mining community which then resulted into this tweet from Red Panda Mining. Now if you guys don't know who Red Panda Mining is he posts videos daily on cryptocurrency mining and he is very involved with the community and I highly recommend checking him out if you're not following him on YouTube and Twitter. So the tweet that he posted reads as follows. For educational purposes, let's collectively move our hash to ethermine.org April 1st for 51 hours. Now this tweet went viral and a lot of media twisted his words and made it seem like he's trying to attack Ethereum. But knowing how Red Panda Mining is, he's a very sincere guy and this tweet came out of good intentions and not bad intentions. The main reason for this tweet was to show them the potential risks of dropping the profits so hard that it can leave a lot of hash rate around that can go anywhere from nice hash to different coins which in results leaves Ethereum vulnerable. So I will address all the drama that happened after this tweet which is a lot of different articles that just wrote about the miners as they are trying to attack Ethereum and all that stuff which we will talk about right after the timeline. So now going back to the tweet, after this happened, a lot of other cryptocurrency mining channels, they followed through and were all planning on putting our hash rate in ethermine.org. But then after a short while, Bitsby Trippin proposed a new EIP. Now if you guys don't know who Bitsby Trippin is as well, you definitely should subscribe to him and check out his content. He is spending a lot of time and effort trying to help us as a community and the least that we can do for him is have his voice heard. So what Bitsby Trippin did after a short while from Red Panda's mining tweet, he proposed this new EIP which is 3368. Now the main purpose of this EIP is to increase the block reward by 1 Ethereum so rather than having 2 Ethereum base reward it will be 3 Ethereum and then it will decay every quarter until it reaches 1 Ethereum after 2 years which leaves Ethereum at a good position to switch to proof of stake because like that it gives every miner enough time to prepare themselves and decide what they're going to do with their hash rate rather than putting them in a spot that have to drop a lot of hash rate or move it around suddenly. Now just to be clear that this EIP is supposed to be implemented additionally with EIP 1559. It's not one or the other, it's both of them together. I highly suggest checking out Carter's work on it. He made a couple of videos on it as well as an article and I will leave those in the descriptions below. Just go to his channel and then you'll see here a deep dive in EIP 3368 and all the models that he built around it. A lot of very valuable information that you guys should definitely check out. So now after the EIP 3368 is proposed, Red Panda Mining retweeted again and he said he's resending from the show of force on ethermine.org. So that means we're not going to plan on putting our hash rate on ethermine.org anymore and if you're just mining there you can definitely be mining there it's not an issue at all and the reason he's resending is because we finally have our voice heard so as you can see here tim from the core devs as well he tweeted that he saw the eip 3368 and they will be listening to it at the next all core devs meeting which is great for us miners this is really good news and having at least a chance to propose a new suggestion that can fix this problem it's great so now that we covered the timeline and and we're just waiting until the meeting happens. And so the meeting has already happened and I thought it wouldn't happen yet until next week from posting this video but I was wrong so I had to re-edit a couple of things for this video so we can be up to date with what's going on. So now if you guys watched the core devs meeting where they talked about the EIP 3368 and a couple of other things, EIP 3368 got rejected from being included with the EIP 1559 on July so we won't be expecting that increase in block reward. Now that's some bad news but at the same time it's not so bad because the main goal for Bitsby Trippin is to say that EIP 3368 is an option especially if the price of Ethereum drops and it causes a lot of shortage in the profits for miners which will end up making the miners leave the network. So EIP 3368 is not fully out of the table yet but eventually they might apply it if the profits of Ethereum drop really hard. So where we sit now we are going to be expecting in July the profit drop for Ethereum miners 
Now I don't know exactly what date, but when it happens, I'll try to make an update video on it. And if you guys want to know what's my course of action, I will be covering that right after the drama. Now we can move on to the drama. So the drama all started after Red Panda Mining tweet. Now Red Panda Mining didn't purposely start the drama, but there's a lot of media outlets that twisted his words and made it seem like miners are trying to attack Ethereum, which is very unreasonable. Now there is no reason that miners need to attack Ethereum because first, that doesn't help us, that actually makes us lose money. And a lot of us miners hold a lot of Ethereum, so there is no reason to take Ethereum down just because of the mining profits. The one thing that they seem to have a blind eye on, the main reason for this tweet is to show that there's a potential of opening a door for a 51% attack with this new EIP 1559 that they are trying to implement. As Bitsby Trippin states in the EIP 3368, a sudden drop in the proof of work mining rewards could result in a sudden decrease in mining profitability, which will drive miners to auction off their hash rate to the highest bidder and then that can open doors for bad things. So rather than dropping the mining profits really hard, EIP EIP 3368 will try to mitigate that issue and balance it out. Now if we take a look at a couple of the articles, here are some ones that I was able to find just from searching EIP 1559 and then miners. So you can find here Ethereum miners threatened to strike ahead of EIP 1559 and all this unnecessary stuff that's going on in the media just causing additional drama for no reason at all. Putting our hash rate on ethermine.org, that doesn't mean ethermine.org is going to plan a 51% attack on Ethereum. Ethermine.org is not a bad actor in this field so us miners doing it for educational purposes that doesn't mean miners are trying to attack ethereum i'm not sure how they got that out of it but that seems to be the general idea of the media so anyways in general for all the media it's all seemed to be just way too negative towards miners now i honestly personally don't care i feel like it's very dumb to try to separate miners from investors and traders we're all the same just miners choose to invest in hardware which in return makes them crypto and then investors that buy the cryptocurrency just buy the cryptocurrency directly now that doesn't make us any different we just buy it through a different means and we still accumulate crypto at the end of the day now after all these articles that are spilling too much nonsense there are a couple of youtube channels as well that talked against miners for example bitboy crypto he did talk badly towards miners but you can't blame the guy now i first want to say i don't condone any hate so you guys shouldn't go to any media outlet or any youtuber or any content creator and show them any hate so bitboy crypto he's a big channel and he has really awesome content so i have nothing against this guy he also made a video on september 20 where he interviewed seth estrada from mine your biz and it was a really wholesome interview about mining so what i'm trying to get to is that bitboy crypto does not have any evil intentions towards miners I mean, I could be wrong, but this is just my opinion, at least I would hope that it's that way. And it's just that we need to clear out the ignorance that's going on, that miners are out there to get them and all that stuff. Now to wrap up the drama, if you're a user in the Ethereum community and you have a negative perspective on miners, I ask you to read more than just the headlines of an article or two. You don't need to separate yourself from the miners because at the end of the day, we are all what keeps Ethereum thriving whether you're a miner, investor, or a trader. Due to all the drama as well, Vitalik came out and he said he's going to try to merge proof of stake as soon as possible. Now, I honestly think that's a bad idea, especially rushing something like that. First, it's not going to reduce any gas fees and it's just to put it in the face of miners. And that is it for the drama. Now, as for what I'm going to be doing, I'm honestly not going to be stopping mining anytime soon. I'll probably be buying more GPUs, but specifically Nvidia cards, not AMD, because AMD cards don't do that well on other algorithms so it's better to stay safe and just get nvidia and if the mining profits on ethereum drop drastically that it's not profitable for me to mine anymore then i'll probably be switching to a different coin and then just collect that and either sell it and buy ethereum or just collect that other coin now this is not a financial advice it's just what i'm going to be doing so now that wraps up the video guys i first want to say sorry that this video took a really long time to publish i had to film it a couple of times because i keep learning new things and i want to make sure that i give you guys the most accurate and up-to-date information and i also want to give a huge thanks to the community and all the content creators that made making this video a lot simpler you guys put on some phenomenal information out there and it helped a lot so after this eip 1559 miners perspective the next goal will be making a video on ethereum 2.0 a look in the future so make sure that you stay tuned for that now i also want to thank you guys for almost reaching the channel to 50,000 subscribers that is crazy and i'm planning on a big giveaway on 50,000 subscribers so make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed yet so you can join the giveaway 
Now that wraps up the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.